Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So it turns out that due to fancy things such as solar cycles and solar maximums, the Northern Lights are due to get a bit extra magical this year. They are due to get brighter and be more colorful, and you can see them from even lower latitudes than we traditionally think of. So if you have ever dreamed of seeing the Northern Lights, 2024 could actually be the best year to do that. But why? What are these fancy things I speak of, and how far south could they actually be? Well, get cozy, get ready for a whole lot of gorgeous Northern Lights footage, and a dash of low-key science explaining this whole thing. So just as a background, the Northern Lights, aka Aurora Borealis, is created when energized particles from the sun slam into the Earth's upper atmosphere at speeds of up to 45 million miles per hour. Our planet's magnetic field protects us from the onslaught, and the dramatic process transforms into a cinematic atmospheric phenomenon that dazzles and fascinates scientists and sky watchers alike. Some people consider seeing the Northern Lights the holy grail of sky watching. So at any given moment, the sun is ejecting charged particles from its corona, creating solar wind. And when that wind slams into the Earth's upper atmosphere, or ionosphere, the aurora is born. In the Northern Hemisphere, the phenomenon is called the Northern Lights, Aurora Borealis, while in the Southern Hemisphere, it is called the Southern Lights, or Aurora Australis. And this phenomenon has been observed for thousands of years. Over those years, people, of course, not understanding what they were looking at, had all kinds of stories to explain them. They were deemed to be spirits of those who had been violently killed, spirits rejoicing in the absence of the sun, spirits of dead animals, spirits of enemies killed in combat. Lots of spirit stuff, but when you see them, it kind of makes sense. There is definitely a spirit vibe going on here. It was the Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei who coined the name Aurora Borealis in 1619, after the Roman goddess of dawn, Aurora, and the Greek god of the north wind, Boreas. But the earliest record of the Northern Lights is said to be this 30,000-year-old cave painting in France. And this is the first photo of the Northern Lights, taken in 1895 by Martin Brendel, a German astrophysicist in Finland. But it wasn't until we started sending up satellites in the 1950s that we actually started to have a better understanding of what the Northern Lights actually were, and what role the sun plays in their creation. So what is so exciting about 2024 when it comes to the Northern Lights? Well, 2024 is the solar max maximum, the period of greatest solar activity within a solar cycle, which typically lasts approximately 11 years. Ooh, I am saying solar a lot in this video. <laughs> NASA's Goddard Space Center actually put out this video in 2012, I think, explaining what a solar cycle is and what solar maximums and minimums are. In addition to these abrupt changes in activity, the sun also has a long-term, more regular pattern of change. This pattern is called the sunspot cycle, and a single cycle lasts for about 11 years, although it can be as short as 8 or as long as 14, and it can vary dramatically in intensity. During one cycle, the number of sunspots, a good indicator of solar activity, goes from low to high and back down to low. Solar minimum represents a period of time when sunspot numbers are relatively low, and solar maximum represents a period when sunspot numbers are relatively high. So a solar maximum is the highest peak of solar activity during a solar cycle. The sun is really just this ball of electrically charged gases that create a magnetic field as they move about. And this magnetic field goes through a cycle of activity. And this is what they're really referring to by the solar cycle. During a cycle, the number of sunspots, which is a good indicator of solar activity, increases during the solar maximum and decreases during the solar minimum. The number of sunspots is also a way of measuring the overall intensity of a particular solar cycle. No two solar cycles are the same, and scientists have recently discovered that the upcoming solar maximum, solar cycle 25, is going to peak between January and October of 2024, being much more active than previously expected. And this is the juicy bit, because the more solar activity there is, 
the brighter the aurora displays will be. So there's this complete correlation between the northern lights and what's going on on the surface of the sun. And sunspots are particularly active areas. This is where the electrically charged particles erupt from. And as these particles stream towards Earth, they are captured by the north and south poles because that is where the Earth's protective magnetic field is at its weakest. The particles interact with the gases inside Earth's atmosphere, and this results in these incredible light displays. When they interact with oxygen, the lights go green. When they interact with nitrogen, they go blue and purple. During the solar maximum, there's going to be an increase of sunspots, which means more solar wind, more charged particles. Hence the aurora displays being more frequent and more intense. And for the same reason, you are likely to see the displays at lower latitudes. In late 2023, there were some amazing pictures of the northern lights visible from Stonehenge in the UK. And if you're not familiar with the UK, this is particularly crazy because Stonehenge is not in the north of England. Not at all. In fact, it's further south than London. Well, south and west, but anyway, it's pretty far down there. In the US, they say that you might be able to see them as far south as Washington, Wisconsin, and New York. Apparently, Montana's National Glacier Park is said to be a good spot, according to Lonely Planet, as is Michigan's Headlands International Dark Sky Park. But even though it's a solar maximum, the usual advice for seeing the northern lights still applies. You need to be in the auroral zone, stay away from light pollution, and it needs to be a cloudless night. So if you live in a big busy city, it's gonna be a struggle, solar maximum or no. But with the solar maximum, there's even a chance that we might see scarlet aurora displays, which is when the particles interact with very high altitude oxygen. And this only happens when the aurora is particularly energetic. I found quite a number of pictures of the scarlet aurora in Russia, so, seems to happen there quite a bit. So with an increased likelihood of vivid aurora displays, 2024 seems like the ideal time to go on a Northern Lights holiday. Though they do say that 2025 will also be a year of high solar activity. So I guess either year you could do it. And in particular, Iceland, Norway, and Finland do get a lot of Northern Lights action. They do a lot of specialized Northern Lights tours up there. So if you are committed to seeing them, I think those places would probably be the best bets. NOAA has a Space Weather Prediction Center which maintains a detailed 30-minute aurora forecast where you can see the predicted extent of the auroral oval and the probability of auroras. I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can see if this actually might match up to somewhere you actually live. There's also a number of Northern Lights live cams where you can see the Northern Lights in the comfort of your home. So if you live nowhere near any of the places that I've mentioned, mentioned, this might also be a good bet. I'll post from these live cam links in the description below so you guys can bookmark it just so you can maybe take a peek from time to time. Magical lights tonight. No, okay. So yeah, I had just come across this article talking about how magical 2024 was going to be for the Northern Lights and so of course I clicked on it then I went down a few rabbit holes and here we are. Let me know what you think in the comments below, especially if you have seen the Northern Lights in real life. I did try once but it was clouds the whole whole time I was there, so no luck, but still on my bucket list. Looks amazing. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.